you can do the exact same thing we're doing and get as much out of it as you can. Good morning, beautiful people. Happy chicken processing day. I don't know if happy is the right word, but that's what we're doing today. We're up bright and early. It's raining, but rain or shine, it's gotta be done. It is the day. Eggs and toast for breakfast, something really quick and easy. Ben's out doing the chores, feeding everybody that needs to be fed, and then we're gonna get set up and get started. Just wanted to warn you, um, you guys know that we don't really show any of the like super gross nitty gritty about butchering days because mostly YouTube just doesn't really like it and I mean we understand that and a lot of you are not here for butchering and processing stuff you're here for just like our family homesteading journey and that's totally cool but we do have some things we wanted to share today I want to go over like how we really use these chickens and how you can use them even if you're not growing them yourselves like what you can do with whole chickens um, from like a whole chicken to like processed finished state and how we use everything what are you doing you're weird how we get as much as we can out of each bird so we're gonna go over that today um, I think we're gonna show breaking down a bird just to give you guys a rundown on how to like cut up a whole bird if you aren't familiar with that and then what we do with them from there so any close-ups or like detailed stuff that you'll see today will be from a like normal whole bird that you would get at the store nothing like super gross that's that's the only thing we'll be showing detailed and close up today so I'm gonna eat and get ready and grab all the things that need to be grabbed and then we'll get started you're pushing the back side okay got everything killed and in the coolers and all that we had lunch thank you to our friend Amanda who came to help she had a bounce so now we wanted to talk about how we like get the most out of our birds mm -hmm. basically like, we're squeezing every single penny of these expensive <laughs> birds out as we can um, so I want to go over will you show how to break down a yeah. bird yeah okay and then um, we'll show you what we do with the carcasses. The reason I want to go over this with you guys is because even if you aren't growing your own birds, or maybe you can't even find them at a farmer's market or anything like that, generally, for the most part, it's cheaper to buy whole birds at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And then you could totally do exactly what we're going to do with he here with birds from the store. So we wanted to go over that with you to like show you how you could do this system, even when you're like, past the butchering point. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You, you can't partake in that part, but you can still do the rest of this and show you how you can get the most out of your birds as well. All right, so I'm standing over Ben's shoulder so you guys can see a bit easier. Hopefully the lighting will hold out here. All right, I like to start with the leg quarters. You just open that skin up. Right? Yep. Okay, then you push on that, pop that joint loose and then you're cutting towards the center of the backbone and you cut right through where that joint just opened up and you just follow on through towards the tail and there is your beautiful leg quarter. Leg quarter. Oh, that looks great. All right. If you're meeting a ton of resistance, you're probably in a bone or on a bone. So just yeah. kind of wiggle around until you... If, if you look right here, there's a little bit of the 
that's like the the joint. back of the hip mm -hmm. there's the joint and then there's a little bit of bone right there and then that muscle right there we call the oyster yeah. that's a really good little tender vittle if you're cooking a whole bird we will reclaim that so don't worry yeah. and if you leave too much meat on the carcass this is why we do it the way we do it so we reclaim that okay the next one pretty same much side. same as the other side you just get this skin cut and if you see some ooey gooey it's just because sometimes you get water in around the uh like under membranes under and membranes mm -hmm. and stuff like that it's the soaking water all right see there's another, there's one. another one okay so we have two leg quarters Actually, we usually break them down just that far, but you could, um, actually when you're done with this, will you show how to break yeah, down that Yeah, I'll all show the way? how to break it down. Sometimes there are a few feathers left and it's not a big deal, but. We have found for the feathers that do hang on while we are butchering, um, after they cool off, once they're in the cooler, in the ice bath, um, after they cool off, they kind of release a bit better. Okay, there's a wing. So I cut a little bit into the breast right there. And actually that's no big deal at all because then when we cook this as a wing, because when you break down a wing, you cut that right there. Just like with the leg quarter joints. Right through that joint. And now you have your wing, your drumette, and then we'll cut the wing tips off. See, I don't have a cutting board out here. Yeah, so. <laughs> don't wanna ruin your knife. Where's the snippers? Hand me a pair of snippers. You can do the wing tips with a pair of nippers. Well, that would have been easier the other night. We had wings the other night and I was sitting chopping all the tips off. So then that will actually stay with the carcass and we'll mm -hmm. turn that into stock. There's your wings. That's your, your what, is, what, is, what is that? A winglet? Something like that. There, there's a term and then that's your drumlet. So there's your portions of the wing. We leave them whole. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, we keep Wings go in there. Okay. So in here, you basically aim for the armpit or the wing pit. And you just cut in and you'll fill when you hit that socket. And that socket just starts letting go and you can see where to cut. And you just cut it on off. That made sense. Cut it on off. Cut it on off. And there's your other wing. All right. Okay, now you're left with the breasts. Now, sometimes it's easier to leave the leg quarters on, that way the, the carcass stands up. Yeah, you have but a it, handle. Yeah, you have a little bit of a handle. It'll stay up a little bit easier. You basically cut down, cut down your breast. Following the breastbone. Following the breastbone, stay on one side of the breastbone. I'll make a cut here so you can see that's the breastbone. Okay. That'll be in the middle. It's just like a thick chunk of cartilage. Yeah, you can cut through it if you're really pushing. Okay, and then you just take the tip of your knife in and you just fillet that breast off. You'll fill right in here. That is the wishbone. And you just follow that wishbone down. This is why I like to take the wings off. Do you have more room to work? You have more room to work. Same with the leg quarters, you have more room to work. Now I'm leaving a little bit of meat on there and that's completely fine. Because we're going to reclaim it. we're going to reclaim it. All right. There's, There's our breast. Breath. And then the trickiest one is the last breast. Especially if you've taken everything off. Because now there's like nothing to hold on to. And it's lopsided. This is where an apron comes in very handy. Yes. A rubber waterproof apron. Yes. Same thing. You just fillet down. Now this is very, very thin. You can poke through that. Mm -hmm. And so you just stay on top of it. Just roll that breast right out down to the wishbone in the front. And then once you start breaking through, you'll see we're actually like coming out right here. That's what we're kind of aiming for, right? So, roll it out. Here's where the wing was attached. And you don't have to be super precise. Mm -mm. Right there. There we go. There's your tenderloin portion, yeah. your chicken tender. <laughs> there's the breasts, and there's our carcass. All right. 
So if you don't want to gut a chicken, you can actually scald and then pluck and then leave all of the guts inside and then cut all the meat off. Yes, you Be can. Because we're doing both, we clean the birds, we gut them, we do all of that. Uh, and we have everything ready. Everything is a whole bird at this point. If we wanted to, if we got tired of being down here, we could bag them all, shrink, shrink seal them, and put them in the freezer as whole birds. Right, which we have done 20 this time around. Yeah. Um, today, we're going to do the majority of them because we don't have a lot of freezer space <laughs> as broken down leg quarters, breasts, and wings. Right. Um, and then we're going to make stock out of this. And in the process of making stock with our carcasses, we reclaim all these little bits of meat that we couldn't get off with a knife. And you know, if we were making sausage or something, we could sit and peel this stuff off further right. and grind it. We don't have that kind of time. So this is all cleaned out. It's ready to go. We're gonna fill it as full of carcasses as we can get it. And then we'll haul it up there to the house and cook up there. That way it's next to the house when mm -hmm. we get to it instead of having to come down here. That's pretty much how to break down a chicken. So like Ben was saying, this is gonna become stock and this gives us basically, well, I mean like multiple meals out of one bird, but this is gonna give us the chicken stock itself, which I'll use to cook rice. I'll use it for soup. I'll use it for sauces and gravies. Um, having chicken stock on hand is yeah. so useful. And then once this chicken is cooked before the stock, like we'll let the stock go for probably like 24 hours. Yeah. But after like two or three hours, once the chicken is cooked, we're gonna hollow those chickens out of there pick all the, meat. the meat all off and then I'm going to can that and then we're going to have that's going to be a whole separate meal in itself is the canned chicken so we're getting literally as much as we can out of these birds and then the bones go back in there and we simmer it with the aromatics carrots and onions and actually that. one of the things that we made a mistake a while ago is if you cook this too long those carcasses don't have much meat so they cook quick yeah they do so honestly about an hour is all you need you check it and when you can pull up a carcass and all the meat comes off, but it's not like shredding and falling apart. Right. Because you can't overcook it and it turns to mush. Yes. And which, that by the time you can it, it's just even more mush and it's like not tasty it's, at all. It's got, it's a weird texture. Yeah. Thing. So we just make sure you just cook it like you would a cooked chicken in about an hour. It's ready. And then we pull all that meat off. So we're getting as much as we can out of these chickens. We don't want to waste anything. And we've actually been really happy with this system. Yeah. And... After we're done with this, uh, we've got all the meat off, we've made you know, like bone broth stock, whatever. What is left, the bones are so, because they're cooked, we've pulled all the minerals out we right. can get. They actually just kind of pulverize. And so I'll take those and I'll either put them directly in compost and make compost out of them. Right. Or I'll take them to the fire pit and we burn all those bones. Right. And then they turn into powder. With the, our ash. With our ash. Yeah for the garden. Yeah. So, so we're using <laughs> everything, yeah, dust to dust. When we're done with these birds, they will be dust and they will be going back on this land. Right. Yeah, it's actually really awesome. We started doing this after the first time that we broke down our birds mm -hmm. and we threw away the carcasses because we were like, we, well, what do we do with it? We we're burned them. Check, yeah, we burned we them. We burned all the carcasses just like that with we're all that meat. Because at least we were like, well, we can burn them and use them in the, in the garden. Yeah. But we were like, man, we were burning them and we we're like, that smells like barbecued chicken. Yeah. like There's it, so much meat on those yeah. still. So we were like, why don't we try making stock and doing this? And we have loved it. It's been awesome. And then I get canned chicken, which is a super quick meal for yep. us. And we get the broth and we feel better about using the whole bird. And like I said, this is something that you can do with a whole store-bought bird or a farmer's market bird, or wherever you get your chicken, you can do the exact same thing we're doing and get as much out of it as you can. All right, almost forgot. Okay, so here is how to break down a leg quarter. Break down a leg quarter. So when you get a leg quarter, if it's got the skin on, it's kind of hard to see where it breaks apart. So you look at the meat side and see that fat seam right there? That is where you'll cut. You basically follow that right there. So it's easier when it's cold Cut right in there, follow that fat seam, and look at that, the joint is right in there. So, once you break that loose. Straight through. Straight through. So you have a drumstick. There's your drumstick, and, and there's thigh. your bone in thigh. Mm -hmm.
All right, so some time has passed. Hold on, I'm gonna go grab the tripod so I don't have to stand here. <laughs> While he's doing that, I'll update you on our plants. Look, they're looking great. Everybody is happy and growing, doing good. Give us some food for the winter. All the handy dandy tripods that we've paid good money for and I use some old pipes. And they work the best. All right, time to talk numbers. Yep. Chicken numbers. We haven't done this in our last couple batches, so. I thought we did it last time. No, we didn't. We wound up just bypassing that part. I think we were so happy to be done with meat birds yeah. last time. It was yeah. just like, yeah, forget it. Yeah, so, alrighty, for the update. And I think this will be a good update because feed prices have increased significantly. Exponentially. Exponentially in the past year. And we like to share this for the people that are like, is it even worth it? Or, you know, whatever, so. Kind of teetering on not worth it. Uh, I mean, it depends. If we're honest, we can't get the exact same thing in the grocery store, even from a Whole Foods, because even with their marketing schemes, you know you're not really getting like a legit pasture raised, yep. moved every day by teenage boys, <laughs> <laughs> chicken. So, Murray McMurray sent us the birds, mm -hmm. um, which is very kind of them. You guys, they're an awesome company, so if you're looking for meat birds or any other chickens, we have been super happy with McMurray's yeah, birds, we've, actually. We've been um, pretty, pretty lucky with these. This batch, I think we only lost six by, yeah. by the time all was said and done. Usually, like the last batch, we left them in feed the entire time and they all started getting heart problems because yeah. they grow faster than their body can grow. Deal with, yeah. So this time we held their feed at night and didn't lose any to heart failure. Yeah, so yeah, we've gotten our birds from Mary McMurray, so we didn't pay for these birds up front mm -hmm. so just keep in mind to add two dollars and 94 cents to this price if you were to buy them yourselves mm -hmm. Alrighty, so like you said we did basically 12 on 12 off for the feed yep and so all in all we buy organic soy free fancy feed that's what's important to us um you could do it cheaper from just a different feed but for us, for what we paid for, our prices were nineteen seventy per bird. We wound up with ninety-eight birds, all said and done, um, and then per pound that came out to four dollars and nineteen cents per pound. So, um, like I said, compared to like, let's say we're going to Whole Foods and getting a Whole Foods fancy bird, that's pretty comparable. That's pretty comparable. I think for the most part, they're actually like thirty dollars, depending on what kind you get at Whole Foods. That's about so. right. I mean, I don't know what it is now. We haven't been to Whole Foods in a very, very long time. Yeah. But last time we were in there, it was like 30 to $40 a chicken if yeah. you buy a whole bird. I think we did pretty good, even yeah. considering the prices of feed going up so much. Yeah. But happy to put birds in the freezer. Glad oh. it's done. Glad it's done. It's always like we've taken to doing uh, meat birds like twice a year. We found that the chances for spoilage in the heat of summer are so much higher. So we're pretty much swearing off doing summer birds. Summer yeah. birds. Just it's miserable. Well, and it's we have found for the health of the birds themselves it's not good for them because yeah. they tend to have more health issues in the summer when it's really hot and they I mean they get so big. Yep. So we were like, you know what? Let's just not do them in the summer anymore. We don't like processing in the summer. They aren't that healthy in the summer. So we stuck to spring and fall this time around, mm -hmm. and that was great. We, That's great. So there we go. That's our chickens for the year with the numbers. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to break down if you're not familiar with that. Yeah. It's really bright in here, so I'm like super squinty, sorry. And I guess that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Catch All right. you guys on the next one. Bye.